And it was nothing but marijuana. <laughs> no they were, like, like, yeah. Bags? Not like Box sandwich bags. bags. These aren't sandwich Ziplocs. These are 50 gallon trash bags. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Selling North Georgia podcast. I'm Corey Shields. And I'm Boomer Bates. And today we are with Tim Larkins with Precise Inspections. Tim, thank you very much for being yeah. with us today. Thanks for having me on. Looking forward to this. All right. So we're going to learn a little bit about home inspections yeah. and uh, what you're up to with your team and everything. Um, but first, let's kind of uh, start at the beginning. Tell us a little bit about how you got started with inspections and uh, kind of how your path started. Sure. Um, well, as with most home inspectors in the industry, uh, this is not what you went to college for. It's kind of an afterthought and a, a second or third career for most of us. So uh, I used to be a golf professional locally here in uh, Chattanooga Golf and Country Club. I was also the head pro at Barnsley Gardens down in Daresville. And when my kids were born, that's when the wife and I really sat down and said, you know, is this the career opportunity that we want to stay with? And we decided no. So we looked at uh, several different opportunities, of course, because you're on change, big, big change, you look around. And uh, I happened to know several realtors that would hang out at the golf course a lot and mentioned about doing home inspections. And they're like, well, hey, you can talk to people, you know, you, you know how to you know, communicate, you got some customer service skills, or could you look into it? You know, so we looked into it and uh, we were like, well, I, I really want to get my contractor's license and build, build houses. And, um, my wife, she, she got a little nervous and she said, well, why don't we start with the home inspections? We can always kind of fall back, but, uh, be a little bit easier to get going. And, uh, 16 years later, we're still doing it. <laughs> so we never look back. Oh, so it was just a pretty smooth transition from, from the Barnsley days to, to yeah, the inspections. it was. And that's kind of one of the, the differences, uh, I guess with our company or with my company is all of our knowledge came from books. You know, some of the guys come in and maybe they're ex-plumbers and they're ex-roof contractors. And they said, hey, you know, uh, I don't want to do that all the time or whatever, I'll become a home inspector. You know, I, I know enough about houses that I've seen it. My side was the flip side was, my dad was an engineer, which he made me build everything with him, but I didn't come construction, you know, swinging a hammer into the industry. I swung a golf club. So I got book knowledge, you know, so it was the plumbing book and the electrical manuals and everything and really read those on the how to and the installations wow. and stuff like that. So um, that's kind of a little different stand part uh, or point of emphasis on our reports is everything we put in there, I can stand on a book and say, this is why it's in there, right. you know, not, well, Paul taught me seven years ago that this is okay, kind of scenario. So when you first started, just a one-man show? Just a one-man show, that was it. We were pounding the pavements right at the perfect opportunity of the housing collapse of 2006 and seven, the uh, optimum time to, you know, start a home inspection company. But, um, you know, joking aside, it was better than the housing industry, yeah. but yeah. we would have took the avenue of, you know, becoming a general contractor and developing right. land, we would have been out of business, you know, day one. So it worked out good. Very cool. What's Precise look like now? Precise looks like now is um, family business. My wife works for me. She does the back office stuff. And we have two other full-time salary inspectors besides myself out there on the pavement. Um, Derek Baker is a young Marine guy uh, that graduated in, uh, out of Ringgold High School, uh, went to the Marines and uh, got out and looked for a career choice. He's been with me over five years now. So he's fell in love with it. Uh, he's going to uh, school for architecture and things like that. So he's really jumped in on the whole housing lifestyle, yeah. basically. Uh, then Joe Holland joined us about two and a half years ago. Uh, Joe is kind of more from a uh, background of HR, human resources for a lot of companies. Um, but his attention to detail, he's OSHA certified. 
which is great because not only do we do home inspections, but we also do commercial building inspections. And uh, a lot of people need to know about OSHA compliance when you're buying a commercial building, ADA compliances and things like that. And uh, like I said, Joe's Joe's certified OSHA certified guy, so he we can we can achieve the uh, requirements of about any, any client that comes our way. About what percentage of your inspections are residential versus commercial? Great question. Uh, residential is probably strongly in the 90, 95 percentile, five to 10 for commercial. Uh, just usually commercial, somebody's buying a warehouse or some type of building. Uh, they're built with trusses and concrete block walls. So usually none of the walls are load bearing inside of them. Yeah. So you don't have to think about rezoning or planning it to fit your business needs. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna knock down whatever they've got and then build it back to what your company demands are. Right. So. But it's out there. They want to know, you know, what's going on with it. Yeah, yeah. And we'll look at it and tell them. Cool. So, Tim, um, how important is it to get a home inspection on the house that you're buying? It's very important. Um, like I said, the, the days of mom and dad kind of following you around and going through the house that knew what they were doing. Um, yeah, they're not there. These kids are buying these houses today. They're sight unseen, you know, today, For sure. uh, as hot as the market is. It, you know, you guys, the realtors walking around with your cell phones doing a FaceTime mm -hmm. video and somebody's making an offer. So done yep. you've done it. And uh, so to get that home inspection gives you that, okay, I'm not there, but what's really going on with that house, um, you know, behind the scenes. So, you know, of course, you know, I'm in the industry, but I, we would recommend every house be inspected because we've never come across the perfect house. You know, even new construction, you, we've never seen. Right, so, I got one right now. We had to have uh, there was a laundry list of stuff, and it's a new construction nobody's ever lived in. Yeah, and we had to send it back to them. And I'm like, hey, you better call your subs back out. And yeah, get stuff taken care of. And, and again, the builder, you know, they've got multiple developments mm -hmm. going on or several houses. They trust the subcontractors to get it done. Maybe they're on they're thin right now because they're on several jobs. So they're pulling in people that they've never worked for, but they found them at Home Depot and said, dude, can you swing a hammer? Come over here. I need you to do something. And just things get missed, you for know, sure. and the building inspectors, they do the best job they can. But, you know, their focus is kind of, you know, five things with the house, you know, foundation, structure, mechanical, plumbing, HVAC and uh, electricity. You know, they're not looking at the roof like we are. They're not looking at the exterior cladding like we are, the decks, the, you know, driveways, the grading, the slope. They've got so many properties to look at. They're there for 15 minutes. We're there for three hours. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people will be surprised to hear that it's a good idea to inspect a brand new house, <laughs> uh, which makes me wonder whenever you have inspected the new houses, the new constructions, is there a particular couple of things that seem to come up most often in those newer houses? The biggest one that comes up the most um, is usually they're just incomplete. I mean, they, they feel like they're done and they've got it ready to go. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, it's, it's just incomplete. You know, sinks are still not connected. Uh, sewer drain pipes are not connected yet to the sewer. Mm -hmm. uh, things like that, that you, yeah, you'd be like, oh, we're on our final walkthrough. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. closing in like four days. Yeah. And then you realize, wait a minute, you know, this system's not even functional in this state. Right. But they got all their hang tags, you know, from the city. So it seems like it is, but again, they're so busy, it's hard. But uh, incomplete installations would be a big one. Uh, the grading is probably number two. Grading is very important. You know, we, we get these hurricane storms that come through yeah. here like Ida, you know, a week ago and dump six, seven inches of rain. You want that rainwater to get away from the foundation and not go underneath your house. But when they're building, uh, not to get over too technical, but they dig out the foundation, it's wider than the wall that you see is the foundation wall. And when they're pushing the dirt back, they're using a bobcat usually. And you're not gonna see a guy, you know, uh, with the tamper going yep. back and packing all this. Mm -hmm. So Mother Nature, when it rains, will pack that for you naturally. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, you know, to me, they should start, we advise them to get with their builder about adding more backfill dirt, knowing that compaction is gonna take place uh, so that they're ahead of the curve for future. Because again, when they're done, they're like, oh yeah, the yard looks great. And a year later, it's not great. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah one thing I wanted to ask too, um, 
and it's a, it seems to be kind of a running joke with realtors. Boomer is going to know exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, you know, when you get an inspection report back, even probably <laughs> a newer house that we were just talking about, that thing is long. That yeah. thing's 50 pages long. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. yeah. And then the buyer is, you know, of course, freaking out. Um, you know, is this thing falling apart or, or whatever? Um, so I guess the question, I've been asked this before, why are the reports so long? That's a great question. Okay. <laughs> so it's kind of twofold. So number one, it is CYA. We have to protect ourselves from future liability and callbacks. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the pictures we're putting in there are just so we have proof of the condition of the house, why we were there that day. Mm -hmm. um, because it's happened. I've gone back, uh, we've done an inspection, no plumbing leaks, everything's fine. Client calls me, hey, we moved in and the kitchen sink is just absolutely flowing out of the cabinet onto the floor. You know, you miss this. And it's like, wait a minute, you know, let me drive over there, whatever you go drive over there, and you can see that they actually, when they were pulling out the stuff from the bottom of the cabinet in the moving out process, yeah. they lifted it and caught the P trap and pulled and dislodged the, the pipe from the actual where it goes through into the wall mm -hmm. uh, to the tailpipe system. So now the water's coming out, but it wasn't in your report. Then you show them and say, well, now we take pictures of sinks yeah. running and the drain pipes underneath with no dripping. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's there. One, they see that we did what we said we were gonna do. We inspected the house for you. But two, it's also that proof of, we did test the system. There's the proof that it wasn't leaking while we were there. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. It helps both ways. Yeah. But when you put pictures in something that's gonna be not just a thumbnail, that actually somebody can see it's going to make your report lengthy. So usually about two thirds of a report, if you were to pull out all the comments, two thirds is pictures, one third is actually just writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So Tim, um, these, these reports come out and they're 50, 60, 70 pages and they just scare the crap out of these buyers and they're like, what's wrong with this house? How do I prep them to realize that what it is is not horrible and it's not going to be a bad house. They just need to take it and understand it. How, how can I help them do that? Yeah. Well, that's a great question. And it starts with prepping. Okay. okay. As long as if you know you're going to the dentist and you're going to get a, a tooth pulled, you can kind of kind of get yourself emotionally ready for that. Right. It's traumatic. Yeah. It's going to be a big experience for you, but it's a lot better than going to the dentist and all of a sudden, you know, you think you're going for just a cleaning yeah. and next thing you know, they're putting you under to rip out a tooth, right? Yeah. You, now you're freaking out because, oh, this isn't how this was supposed to go today. So if you prep them and you prepare them and say, all right, you're going to get more information about this house than you ever thought you were going to get because home inspections have changed. You know, the old way of doing it was you know, just start out with just a written piece of paper. You know, the guys would just write down what they got about the systems and hand it to you. Then digital cameras came into play. People started taking pictures and adding it with that handwritten report. Um, and again, if you're handwriting, it's not going to be very lengthy, not very big. But today, you know, most all the home inspectors in the area, we've got software. And the software is going to be usable on your phone, your smartphone, iPads, things like that. Uh, to where you have comments and uh, they're, they're going to be, it gives you a little bit more flexibility on the length of that comment that you can write and change. And you put pictures in there with arrows all over the place or circling these items. It's beneficial for, again, the people, uh, your clients, your, you know, the people buying the house to get that information brought to them by coming to at the end of the inspection. Again, prep them on the front side. This is not a perfect house. You love it, it fits the location, fits all the bedrooms you want us to find for you. You know, this is where we're putting the eggs in the basket. Just know he's gonna find things. It's not a perfect house. If they come at the end of the inspection, which again, we encourage them to do that because it helps to get the information from the horse's mouth, right? Then there's no relaying So you're okay with them showing up at the end yes. so that you can Love get them a breakdown. You don't want them there following you crawling through the crossways with you. Correct, because right. they're not going to do it anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the money, that money time is that last little bit when we're done inspecting, because we actually classify our comments. Uh, we, again, we've been doing this for 15 years now. 
And we've taken what our clients used to say and realtors would say is, you know, okay, you've got 50 things need to be repaired. Eyebrows go up. Wow, that seems like a lot, right? Because it's repair. It just used to be wrong. It's either repair or replace, repair or replace. Well, my clients would look at me and go, Tim, what do we do? What would you do first if you were buying the house? Yeah, okay. That makes sense, right? Okay, so people have built some trust and I've built their trust by showing them this report. This is what I would do. And I have it broke down in order in our inspection reports on what to do first to last in regards to sections. So things we couldn't get answered today, because sometimes you do a home inspection and you don't know everything when you leave. It's just impossible. Stains on the ceiling. They test dry today, but we've been in a drought for three weeks. And my, do I know for sure that that roof leak's been repaired? Not a chance. So those things have come into more information needed or further clarification needed. Those are questions we have that we would like answered that the, your client can say, hey, you know, get with the, the seller, see if they can give us some educated information about this. If they can't, then we need to look into it further or keep monitoring it. Once I get all my questions done, then we list our stuff is uh, high priorities. You do the high priority stuff, then you do the low priority stuff, then you do the upgrade maintenance things, and last but not least, things to monitor, kind of keep your eye on. Yeah. So that now gives our clients a roadmap to success on how they're going to get there. But going back to your original question, yes, if you prep them on the front side, that there's going to be a tooth pulled here, yeah. come ready, then the information are like so much better and they're much more receptive to, uh, receptive to hear that information. Awesome. Yeah. So I would always say uh, this inspection is going to tell you everything you wanted to know about this house and even more things you did. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. And that usually sets the stage pretty well. Yeah. Well put. There you go. Well, Tim, I think a good way to kind of cap this conversation we're having is, um, I know you must have encountered some funny situations. You must have some funny stories about, um, you know, properties you've been into and inspected. So please uh, do share. Do share. Something. <laughs> do share. Um, well, there's probably too many that actually just kind of come to mind, but there's some some standout moments. Let's just say in a career. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, again, I, I apologize to the audience or whatever. But we went to do a house that. Um, in a local area, I won't say the address by, by for sure for my own safety, but <laughs> we walked in and we could smell the smell of, you know, skunk. And we were kind of set off to something might not be right here. And we went into the house and it was full of these green trash bags. And, um, you know, so we're like, why is there so much trash? The house looked remodeled. Mm -hmm. So I'll give it that. There's paint cans and Looks like somebody's flipping the house, but there's these bags of trash in every room, the basement, the kitchen, the living room, all the bedrooms. In every room? Just every room. Just bags of trash? Every room, bags of trash. Well, some of them were untied. So, in my mind, you know, kind of my nightwear. So, you just kind of look in where they're untied, and it was nothing but marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> no sense. Like, like, yeah. Bags? Bags, trash bags. Trash bags. Not not many not not, not like not sandwich bags. bags. These aren't sandwich ziplocs. These are fifty gallon trash bags. Somebody's moving weight. Somebody's, yeah. Mm. So yeah. So that's a that's a moment you don't forget in your life, and you kind of you know that one sticks out. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, Tim. On that note, I think yeah. we'll uh, wrap this thing up. Uh, like I said, I appreciate you coming in to talk with us. My pleasure. Had it a was, great time. That was a great time. Thank appreciate you very much. It. Yep. Thank you, Corey. Around the mic. Absolutely. Thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Take it easy.